<laughs> now we've got Strictly Come Dancing's Ali Bastian and Brian Fortuna. Plus, I get to eat a cigar. I get to what? <laughs> eat a cigar. And you want to... They, they're making fish fingers and they want me projectile vomit in a tea sand. I don't think so. That's all about training to become a wine, wine expert. I'm good at whining, yeah. But it's time now for my first guest. Now, he gets paid to live out all his boyhood dreams, whether it's building a full-size Airfix model for his toy series or flying a caravan as one-third of Top Gear. He's all go also got something that will replace charades after Christmas dinner. It's a new interactive DVD, DVD and it's called Amazing Brain Trainer. Will you please welcome the man himself, Mr James May! <laughs> Look at that line-up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to put something in front of him? Yeah, put a tissue over it. him, if you like. There, there you go. go. There he's nice. Perfect. James, welcome to the show. It's your first Thank time. You. You're a neophyte, aren't you? A virgin. Yes? In what? It, on this. Oh, yes. On the yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yes. Very nice. Sir. First things first, what happened with this caravan? I have to know, did it actually fly? Oh, yeah, it flew. Are you um, telling me the truth, James? I'm telling you right, absolutely hand-on-heart truth. Yeah. The, the caravan flies... Um, we did fly around. Uh, I mean, we did camp it up a bit because it's a sketch. Exactly. I think most viewers are probably clever enough to realise yeah. when we're doing something serious like a car review and when we're just mucking about. And that was mucking yeah. about. But it did fly. I was in it. Um, it did crash <laughs> at the end. Um, I wasn't very hurt. It was a very good excuse for newspapers to mention Richard Hammond's crash again, but really yeah. mine wasn't quite on the same level. I just, you know, I might have banged my elbow very slightly. Yeah. That was it. How did you land the thing? Maybe Badly, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, what it, I mean, th this was Airship Caravan Mark I. None of these things work properly to start with. The first aeroplane didn't work, the first television didn't work very well. It was underpowered, um, it was filled with hot air, whereas future developments I envisage being filled with helium yeah. and powered by two external engines on the caravan with variable pitch propellers and lots of other refinements that will come. But in its underpowered form, it does tend to land a little bit like a balloon, i.e. in the direction the wind is going, which was sideways to the direction in which the wheels of the caravan are facing, unfortunately. So it... But, I mean, it just fell over. That was it. <laughs> and we got the usual... Another Top Gear presenter in death I know, this is a, this was the headlines. I thought, what's happened here? And then you read, flying caravan. I think, hang on, I'm going back to bed. This is all Mary Poppins, all this kind it, of it stuff. It was a bit Mary Poppins, it, well, but... I mean, fundamentally, a caravan airship is a very, very safe device yeah. because... Uh, it floats. Yeah. You know, it's like a thing floating on water. It's like the duck. Yes, yeah. it's exactly yeah. like a duck. With me paddling furiously <laughs> underneath. But you can't... It's, as long as you don't fly it into something, which includes the ground, uh, you should be fine. I think it has a lot of promise. Can you say taking off, pardon the pun, you know, flying caravans? No, people like getting them. I'll tell you what, the roads, country lanes, would be a lot easy, easier well, to get down if you were flying your caravan Well, over exactly. There. This is the premise, because yeah. caravans are slow, yeah. they do frustrate people. They're, it's actually very boring towing a caravan. It's not much fun. It spoils your car. Caravanners want to commune with the British countryside, and the best way to do that is from about seven or 800 feet, where you can see it all. It looks like a big bowl of salad, you know, and it's fantastic. So I think it's a service to the ordinary motorist yeah. and to the caravanner. I can't see that anybody really loses. Right, Ca who wants to go in a flying caravan? <laughs> Very you arrange it, James. <laughs> James, I enjoyed the programme last night about the moon. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Thank um, you. Particularly with the weightlessness, which has sort of whetted my appetite to do G-Force 1. Yes, the, the vomit comet. The vomit comet, it, yeah. yeah. Uh, Is it that bad? Do you feel nauseous when you're on it, this thing? Well, I, I've never been air sick or no, car only. sick or yeah. anything like that. And I've seen people who have been seasick in particular. I mean, a man on a cross-channel ferry once actually asked me to kill him. <laughs> he, was, he looked so terrible. So I can appreciate this. I, mean, I did I actually went in through the... You know, everybody was being sick. And in the cars, is you have, they put those ledges around everything on boats so that if anything is spilled, it... It can only go so far. That's... And it was sort of several inches. And I was about the only person... <laughs> the only person left on the boat who was fine. Most of them were Germans, and they're not very good at this sort of thing. But, uh... <laughs> but I thought, well, I need to go for a pee. And I walked in, and he was lying on the floor, and he looked up at me. And I've never met the bloke in my life, and he just looked up and went, kill me. 
<laughs> so I did. Did you oblige? <laughs> no. I had a melting for you. Do you have to have training to do that? To, to, to do the, G the vomit comet? Yeah. No, you have a very rudimentary medical. Make sure you, you know, you, you, you aren't drunk or on drugs or anything. Although I think the, the drink might be quite interesting. In the, I was going to say, if you went on that hammer, it'd be a hoot, wouldn't it? It would. But yeah. it's, a, it's a similar sensation because they... You start, I mean, all the aeroplane does is fly, uh, fly a series of parabolas. Now, the, the physics is boring, frankly. I did describe it on the programme, but the editor very wisely just went bing, bing around <laughs> James explaining the physics. But it flies a parabola, the effect of which is to yeah. make you weightless inside the aeroplane. And they can adjust the degree of weightlessness, so you do the first, the first parabola at Mars gravity, which is about a third what it is on the Earth. So on that one, you're just a bit light on your feet. Um, and then you do the moon gravity, which is a sixth, and then you can really jump around quite a lot. It and then they fantastic. do complete weightlessness. And if, when he flies, sometimes he, he overdoes it slightly and you go off the thing and then you just get stuck to the roof. So you're stuck to the top of the aeroplane looking down. Well, fancy a bit of that. But if he gets it exactly right, you can actually sit there on, like a sort of Buddha and just float through the air until you headbutt an American accountant who's oh, coming the Oh, yeah, look for that, you know? please. I'm, have you got the number? I have got I'll, the... I'll not on me, but I'll... I'll the show. Yeah, yeah, it's good. If you've had a heart attack, will they let you do it? Uh, yeah, I won't say not. I'll them, just get in and say I'm yeah. fine out. You don't need to bother with me. The, the other thing is, but do you, have you ever had any sort of air sickness or seasickness? No, never. I never get sick at all. Boats, cars, Good. trains, well, nothing. You'll be fine because yeah. the, the, the tragedy of it is the aeroplane, the, the rear third of the aeroplane, it's an old Boeing 727, that still has seats in it, like yeah. the basic 1970s economy class seats. And you all sit in those until it's up to altitude, which is about 30, 35,000 feet, and then you're all taken out and you're given your area to float around it. Now, it is quite expensive, and it's, you know, it's often bought for people as a retirement present or a 21st oh, yeah. birthday present. And there were some blokes, they were German again, actually. There's a bit of a theme developing. But they got up, and the first time he did the Mars gravity, they all puked violently, and they ah. spent the rest of the trip strapped back in their seats. God. So, God. so I wouldn't recommend it if you're in any way prone to that, because it's a massive waste of money. It's just a bad aeroplane flight. It's a waste it? of everyone's money. Because imagine you having a lovely time floating along, and next thing you get this great smack straight in the face. Well, <laughs> interestingly, the, the people that, that that is a problem. But the people who run the thing, there are there are like the equivalent of I don't know, they're weightlessness aerobics teachers, yeah, they're yeah. bouncing around themselves, and they have these things a bit like lacrosse scoops because the the sick is weightless as well. Obviously, it's just <laughs> and yeah, so, but, but they're very good at it. They just go. That's a nice Shut job, isn't it? Just get this bit of vomit here, I'll be fag. Yeah. <laughs> Did you enjoy the drive to the North Pole? That looked fascinating. I mean, I know it was scary on mm. the ice and all that, but... Did I enjoy it? Yeah. I, I'm loath to say no, because it sounds rather churlish, but no. Yeah. I think the problem... The thing is, it, it's remarkable. I've never been in the Arctic, and, and ice formations and, and all that snow and these massive craggy translucent bits that loom up and the sun never quite goes down so the colours change and you think wow that is fantastic yeah, yeah. and it is for a day but by day four or five I mean the only way I can describe it really is if you sit in front of your fridge open the ice box and look at it for two weeks that's sort of what it feels like to drive to the north pole oh and with a really irritating bloke sitting next to you <laughs> yeah we've got a clip here now of you paralyzed with fear you're ready for this bass if you want if we went through the ice, our only chance of escape would be to smash the glass. If that's... See, I don't like the look of that. No, I don't either. I think if we go really far... <laughs> this is... scary. <laughs> Fabulous. Wait. <laughs> You say paralysed with fear. You didn't look paralysed with fear. No, I'm not paralysed with fear. I'm, I'm coiled and primed, ready to save my mate's life in the event that we go through. That, the hammer is to break the glass of the car. I'm not to belt him with. <laughs> it did cross my mind. Tell See, the, the truth. great thing about the Arctic is, and at one, you know, one or two occasions, I had like a big shovel in my hand because generally I dug the car out, and I remember just standing there thinking, we're at least 850 miles from anyone else. I've got the shovel. All this will melt and return to the ocean within a few more months. Who's going to know? Exactly. <laughs> you should do one whack and yeah. just down. And Came close a couple of times. <laughs> I yeah. bet you have. Tell me about this DVD, James. Amazing Brain Trainer. Now, what does it do? Well, it always worries me that it says James May's Amazing Brain on it, because it sounds a bit conceited. It's James May's... Um, it's the brain trainer that's amazing, not my brain. It's, um... Well, you know in newspapers you get those little brain training exercises, yeah. uh, like sequences of numbers? Yeah. It's those... Um, but they're, they're properly designed by Mensa Boffins. I didn't design this, I, I narrate it. Um, 
and it's interactive. It just works on a normal DVD player, and you can select the bit you want to work on. So, I mean, I'm quite good at the sequences. I'm pretty good at the vocabulary and what we used to call comprehension at school. Oh, you know, God, you read yeah, a bit and you have to say which word meant this and, and yeah. so on. And the spatial logic ones where you have, for example, a cube unfolded and you have to say which, when it's assembled, which face is opposite the yellow face or which face doesn't touch the blue face. And then there's memory. And I'm absolutely hopeless. <laughs> I mean, absolutely no clue whatsoever. So in that case, if I were doing it, you can choose to concentrate on memory exercise. And it, and it, it has been shown, and I've, I've experienced it myself, if you have a, a bit of your brain that's weak, it's only like those people who do a lot of cycling but no weight, so they end up with massive legs and these horrible scrawny arms. You work on that bit and it does get better. The, the example I always give is when you play darts in the pub, I occasionally go and play darts in my local, and if I play it quite a lot, after a few days you start to recognise that you've become better at yeah. adding up and taking yeah. away. So you can do that, and then at the end, if you want to, you can take a proper Mensa IQ test, oh, so which is oh, nationally yeah. calibrated, and you can see just how thick you really are. I was going to say, it's <laughs> a tough, the Mensa IQ test, yeah. It's, they're not easy. You do have to concentrate. You can pause it, so you can go off and, you know, go to the pub. Yeah. But oh. actually, I wouldn't do that in the middle of it. But, um... I'll go on the it's... laptop and look up the answer. Well, you can't... <laughs> yeah. you know, it's not like general knowledge, though. You can't really look up the answer. Yeah. It's, I've uh... got to have a go with this. And you're going to say, what's your IQ? Yeah. Um, well, I don't... We, we have a policy, me and the people who made it, of not talking what score I got. Because, to be honest, it's slightly corrupt, because I made it. So I've seen all the questions at some point. I'm not pretending I can remember them. Well, because my memory's hopeless. But, um, <laughs> but if I do it, then it's, it's possible that the result is slightly corrupted. Although it was very high. Well, Christmas Day, I know whose windows are going to get put in mine. But I'm hopeless at things like that. I get the ump. Well, you'll get better at it if I you won't. do it. I'm terrible. Yeah, you will. And you're saying parts of your brain, most of mine has gone. There's a little bit here somewhere hanging on. <laughs> well, you see, m most of your brain isn't used anyway, Paul. That's the, that's the problem. True. <laughs> People are always saying uh, your brain shrinks over time and if you drink too much beer and too much wine, you know, your brain cells evaporate and a, there's a bit, I can't remember what it's called, the middle of your brain is... Medulla like oblongata, is it? Something like yeah. that. But that gets bigger. I've had my brain scanned just for a, a science programme, and that does get bigger. And you think, God, if I carry on like this, one day I'll wake up and there'll be a little sort of <laughs> noise, and my brain will have completely disappeared. <laughs> but it doesn't actually work like that because the, the, the amount of grey matter that you're actually using is still much smaller than the bits that are disappearing. I mean, unless you hit it really hard, then I suppose. It... Well, I'll let you know. I will get on Christmas Would you? Day. Yeah. And also, if you see me floating, you know it's your fault. I mean, I in the plane, it. you know, not like... <laughs> oh, this, like James, it's lovely to meet you, finally. Ladies and gentlemen, please, Mr James May. Thank you. And good luck with this. Amazing brain trainer. <laughs> Up next...